Welcome everyone. Today we're going to take a look at getting ready to attack. Most of all, it's going to be about transferring between forehand and backhand because that's probably what is the hardest thing to do because you can train attacking on backhand, attacking forehand, but then when you're in a real match situation, a lot of the times you miss and you don't know why it is. And a lot of the times it is just because the ball doesn't come exactly where you expect it to go. So you might be prepared for a forehand, even mentally and it goes to the back end that you're just a little bit late. So that's why uh, we talk about this today. There is something specific in VR that makes it a little bit harder. Normally when a certain level player or maybe a, a forehand dominant player decides to start playing a forehand, if the ball comes back deep to his back end or her back end, they will still position themselves a little bit to the side so they can still play a forehand and then they will recover to the middle. But in VR, a lot of people are a little bit scared of moving that much, which is understandable, but even more people don't have that much space. So they would run into their walls trying to pivot. So the first tip is to keep your strokes compact. That's why I always start with like a basic drives when I give coaching sessions, because it's a very important stroke. If you don't have time to do like bigger attacking strokes, if you have this and then you can add some bite to it, but still remain fast. It's a good basis uh, to play at a, at a higher speed. For most of these tips, I will show you a, an exercise as well that you will be able to download in the new drill file. So this first exercise is just a simple forehand and backhand. In this case, I would advise to just only use simple drives in this case. If you feel confident, you can start attacking a bit more, but remaining. with a controlled stroke that's quick enough to recover from. Don't stay too close to the table if you want to start looping. So for the short strokes, it's perfectly fine to stay at a arm's distance, a little bit more, extra pedal maybe. But if you want to loop, it's best to take one small step back so you have a little bit more time, a little bit more space. So the next exercise is two forehands, two backhands one that's been around for a while. You can use it to use a second stroke to attack a little bit or try to attack a little bit stronger because you have a bit more time to prepare for it. So you can distinguish between a short drive and then maybe with a little bit more space, more heavy top spin. You don't have to do it every time. You can do it only on the forehand, for example. Keep in mind to stay very focused and to keep your body low so your knees bent, so you're nice and well behind the ball. You keep the point of gravity of your body quite low, so you're well balanced and you can still move to the sides without any issues, without falling over, because if your legs are too close together, um, it's going to be very hard to return. And try to keep your pedal up and your elbow more or less in a similar position wherever you play from, because once you start adding extra stuff in the elbow, you're going to lose a lot of time. And the same with your wrist. Try to keep it in line with your arm if you can. Don't try to open it too much or close it like this. So try to keep as many parts of your body under control. Let's take a look. So first, basic drives. Okay, so this is still controlled, so you know where the ball is going. That's why I could do bigger strokes, force myself a little bit. You can also probably see my strokes are not compact enough yet. Whew. Let me catch my breath and take a look at the next exercise. Stay nice and focused because if you just play one stroke and then you stand up and you just wait for the next one, you're not going to be ready. Make sure you track the movement of your opponent, which in this exercise is quite hard, of course, but you can still see the ball launcher twist a little bit. So you try to keep track of it as much as you can and try to track the ball very well. While you track the ball, try to have your chest follow more or less the direction that the ball is going in. So if the ball is going to your forehand, you automatically follow and you're ready for a forehand. When it goes to your backhand, you don't have to do much, just maybe a little bit to the side. At high speed, it will feel like you can do it, but it's just a, how do you say it, a coat hanger in the beginning when the ball comes in a little bit slower. 
to help you reach uh, your good strokes. It also makes you think about going for a certain stroke too early because if the ball's not even coming there and your chest is already here and the ball is still there, this angle is totally open. Even though you're prepared for a forehand, maybe a little bit more than for a backhand, your chest is still waiting for the ball to start, right? So you can kind of whip in a direction that you need to go. One last thing in this exercise is to keep your feet moving. The idea is that you kind of keep moving. It's a little bit harder in VR because you have the headset bobbing a little bit on your head, but it's the best idea to be able to reach all those places that were unreachable before. So you keep in mind to keep moving. You also keep in mind to give yourself a little bit more space if it goes too fast. Keep your balance well and try to follow the ball with your chest. So this exercise is actually an exercise of four strokes. So it's one deep forehand, one random, one deep backhand, one random. And then we start over. And so it gives you kind of randomized exercise, but it gives you some structure as well. So you know, first ball is going to come here. Second ball you don't know. Third ball is known. Fourth ball you don't know. All right, let's take a look. I'm, I'm twisting my body too soon already. If you notice that happening, just make your strokes smaller again until you can pick up the pace. See, I'm not moving my feet either, so let's go. So since it's the last ball in an exercise, you can choose to really finish the last ball that comes towards you. As if it's like a finishing stroke. I clearly have to work a little bit more on this as well. All right, so let's go to the next harder exercise. Just two random balls and a little bit of time to recover. The idea being that the first ball is a fast drive, so you return it fast, but it comes back fast as well. In the meantime, you try to create some space so you're able to attack. Remember everything that was said before. Just add to that that maybe if you're changing grip for your forehand, don't change it for the first ball. Change it if you do have to change it. Change it when you're uh, finishing the point. Because if you do it too soon, you might be not be able to return to a back end. So try to have a, a neutral grip for those fast drives. And even for attacks, ideally, that's how it is. Because my long, for example, he has the same grip more or less for forehand and back end. The only difference is more uh, index finger, more thumb. But a lot of people, they change their grip just a little bit in the forehand. So this is the advice. Try to have a grip that is easily applicable to both sides. And then if you do want to change your grip to it when you see an open opportunity, try to train to accelerate and play with intent with a neutral grip as well. A lot of the time it's more important to be there fast enough and have a short stroke and be able to keep the ball low and fast instead of trying to go for a big stroke, not getting there and uh, playing a not so high quality stroke that can be counterattacked. Making these decisions in a very short time is not easy. That's why the exercises are here. So you will notice when you're like out of position and the returning ball is bad, that maybe at that point you should do something else. Also for all of these exercises, um, you can always go to the three dots on the ball launcher controls, three dots all the way on the left, and then you can up or lower the time scale. It doesn't make the ball slower, it just makes the time in between each shot longer or shorter. This allows you to start a little bit slower than I did, for example, but then gradually move up in speed. So don't worry about missing too much either. It's normal. This exercise is supposed to make you better at moving. Uh, the better you start moving, the more your legs are 
active during the game, the more of these you're gonna land in a real game. If you're not fast enough, try to make sure that the ball lands deep, fast. You see if my feet are not moving, I'm sure to the middle, it's much harder for me to get there. What's very important as well is using your core. The more you're able to use your abdominal muscles to make the rest of your body move correctly, easier it's gonna be. Whew. So as you can see, this is something that is still bothering me as well. I have very big strokes and I choose a little bit too early, so don't tell anyone. Yeah, in real life I can compensate by pivoting, in here I can't. So I have to get used to keeping my paddle up, getting ready for the ball. As you probably saw, I drop it too low sometimes, or my pedal is already here when the ball is coming there. And you see me lose a lot of time and there's no, no intent in the shot. But I'm not used to it yet, mostly because of real life play, where I can just move my feet to get to the ball. And even then I was laid on my back end a lot of the time, so it was still a weak point. This last exercise is a little bit more complex because there's a serve of your side involved in it too and it's not that easy as it is now with the ball launcher. But we're gonna try anyway. The idea is that you serve and then the ball launcher uh, returns a backspin ball anywhere on the table, so it's gonna be random, which you open up towards their back end and then they're gonna block random two times. And you keep playing to the back end except for the last one which you can finish. All right, so this is to prepare you for switching or whatever is needed after doing a, a more heavy uh, topspin stroke from a, a backspin ball, which a lot of the times could leave you out of position, right? So this is to help you realize if you're really out of position so you can start training stuff that works better and that puts you in a better position against better players that are easily returning those balls or it can block your topspin. So let's take a look. So don't be confused by the serve that the machine is doing. It's just to help you time, all right? So you serve at the same time, more or less. You wait for the ball, finish the point, all right? If it goes too fast, you can just let one slide and then wait for him to serve. Just a little bit later, serve yourself. Up. So in, in principle, you can still watch the ball launcher serve before serving yourself. You can also return the ball and then attack. I think the random one is not super fast yet. So what you can do here is a second stroke. You can put it at 62, for example, 63. And then it will really push you to be on time. So you barely have time. To make it realistic, try to put enough pressure on the first ball, otherwise the ball is coming back before you even hit the ball. So this is not a good idea if you're still looking for good form in your strokes, because you won't have the time to do them probably. most important things which is also one of the hardest things is to not tense up your muscles you might think oh it sounds easy enough and just relax but the thing is once you want to add power the first thing you'll do automatically is tense up if nobody explains this to you in the beginning you will just be tense 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 but then when you're prepared for a tense stroke here and the ball goes there if you're tense, it's going to cost you a lot of effort to get there. It happens to me all the time. So, But if you're uh, relaxed, it's easy to get there. It's the same with the rest of your body. 
if you're really tense, it's very hard to change direction. Try to really grip your paddle and then try to move your wrist, right? And now try to relax your, your grip and then move your wrist. There's like way more uh, range of motion when you're not tensing up. And the same counts for the rest of your body as well. If it's tense, your range of motion is going to be smaller, but it's also going to be much harder to leave whatever direction you're going in. You have to kind of work against the muscles that are trying to keep you, keep your bat in place in that strong position. So if you're relaxed, you can go everywhere. If you're tense, everything's going to be a bit more stocky. You're going to be a little bit later. Just be tense at the moment that you strike the ball. So on a serve, for example, just the moment that you hit it, you just squeeze your thumb and your index finger together a little bit. When you play a forehand, maybe you add just a little bit of force with your index finger on your backhand, with your thumb on top, you can add just a little bit more. There's one last thing that I want to talk about that can help you uh, land your attacking strokes. And it helps me as well, but I forget about it a lot of the time as well. As you noticed, I'm not the best pupil to my own teachings. You said that you have trouble um, getting into position, not when you're playing actual matches. Yeah. So, um, basically, what happens a lot, um, and it happens to me too, is that you actually don't really have a plan when you start your points. Right? Um, and it's normal, it's normal, because when you start out, most of the time you're just like, okay, serve, and then I just see what you do, and I... <laughs> So the idea is that you kind of build up ideas in your head and I call it like 80, 20%. Um, actually, I don't give it a real name, but it's, it's like 80, 20% choices that you make. So when I serve, like I have an 80% idea of me going for a forehand, for example. Right? Mm -hmm. When I play in here because I have less space, I can't do it really exactly like that because there's a whole space that I can't use for my forehand. But in real life, I would be like, okay, when I serve like this, if it's going all the way here to here, I'm going to attack it with my forehand. But when mm -hmm. it comes here, I'm going to go for my backhand. Now, the backhand is not going to be a passive shot because I know when it goes there, that's my second option. And usually, depending on what serve that I did, that if they play it there, it's going to be an easier ball because it's going to be hard for them to place it there. And then when, when it does go there, then I should be able to finish, right? It's not always that easy, but the idea is that at least when they play here, you know what you're gonna do. I'm gonna show you the last drill, which is actually not a drill. It's just a showcase. So I recreated a point played by Mima Ito. It's basically to show what level female table tennis is at, at the highest level. You can see she's super small, but she's so fast, close to the table. She plays with uh, pimples on her backhand, short pimples. So the ball that comes out is a bit more flat, sometimes even pushed instead of played with topspin. And at that speed, it's going to bother you a lot because you cannot use any of the spin that she's giving. You have to kind of play with speed as well. Um, it drives me crazy to try to do this exercise. Uh, well, this example point. And at the last ball, you have to think the real opponent didn't even get there. Um, and uh, in my opinion, of course, it's very well played by both players, by the way. Trying to return these balls, you'll see that just returning only the first stroke of Mimaito is already very hard let alone the second, which is very wide to the other side. And the third is very understandably unreachable if you don't know it's coming. So let's take a look. Seven, ten. Bring the pressure, eight so. Ten, <laughs> nine. She's so fast, she's almost out of our uh, camera shot there, <laughs> Jihan So. All right, so I'm gonna do it lazy old man style. That's the only thing I can do. You can imagine if I do this in real life, the point wouldn't even have lasted this long. Okay. And still, still I miss, even though I know what's coming in. So feel free to take a look at this point, um, but don't drive yourself crazy trying to return it because it has not a lot of sense. 
because it's very, very specific and it's very easy to get injured trying to do this because the range is very wide. So if your space is not big enough, for sure, don't try it. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, try to just look at it and just imagine seeing that in real life without knowing what's going to happen and responding to it in time. Uh, crazy. <laughs>